Well, I'm joined now by Kevin Marr, who's an author and a commentator on Irish politics. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Always hey, a pleasure. Um, we heard from a local resident there in Dublin um, who said it was carnage on the streets last night. I wanted to ask you, though, about the reaction of Leo Varadkar. Um, he made a statement this afternoon and he seemed to turn his anger not on the perpetrator of the crime, but on the residents of Dublin. He called them cowardly chaplains, um, saying that most people are afraid of you, your anger, your hate, and how you blame others for your problems. Um, he called the rioters criminals filled with hate. Do you think, considering the situation, we just heard of some of the political backdrop, how there's great dissatisfaction from locals, do you think that's the right thing for Varadkar to have said? I think it's a predictable response because Leo Varadkar is, like a lot of European politicians, he is uh, very liberal. Um, the party he leads, Fianna Gael, is, is a kind of David Cameron Tory party. Um, they're very socially liberal, economically liberal. They've ignored um, a lot of the, the social and economic problems um, in the Republic of Ireland. I mean, I Ireland is a, is a bit of a paradox. Economically, it's doing incredibly well. Um, it, it, it's, its tax receipts are overflowing. Jeremy Hunt looks on enviously, I've no doubt. But there are a lot of problems with housing. There are a lot of problems with um, dilapidation in, in those traditional communities. As Dougie was mentioning a few minutes ago, that his government um, has presided over and done very little about. Now, the problem that, that's, that's taken place really in Ireland in the last decade is that a million migrants there or thereabouts have come and settled in Ireland over the last decade. It's been a massive social change very, very quickly. And typically, like in Britain and like lots of other European countries, done without the consent, the electoral consent of the Irish people. And it's created a very big backlash. And, and you know, quite rightly, as, as Dougie was pointing out, over the course of the last year or 18 months, there have been a lot of uh, disturbances, there have been a lot of protests, there's, there's been a lot of anger. And on this occasion, it's spilled over into the into, into the writing that we've seen. Now, it, you know, you have to say immediately that all those people on the streets attacking Irish police officers were not necessarily making a sophisticated political point when they broke into sports shops to nick expensive trainers. But, but there's an awful lot of frustration frustration there because Ireland is changing very, very rapidly. 20% of its resident population is now foreign born. Now that is higher than Britain at about 15%. And it is higher even than the United States of America, that great melting pot mm. at about 14%. The comparator really is Sweden, but exactly the same, uh, the same percentage of its population that's, that's foreign born. You know, and as we can see in Sweden, there are all kinds of social and problems emanating from the communities that, that have settled there. And Sweden, peaceful Sweden, now has the highest gun murder rate in the European Union. Okay, so, so, so I just change very fast, but without consent. And that's the big problem. OK, Kevin Moore, we're going to have to leave it there. Great analysis. Thank you very much for joining us on GB News.